Welcome back everyone. Today we have another dream analysis video. So I haven't done one of these for a while. I think I have three on the channel already. I did one on the belly of the beast, one on the portrait of Satan. That one was excellent. And then one on uh, three different dreams actually of apocalyptic visions I've had. So you guys can go check those out if you haven't already. Um, for the last one that I did, the apocalyptic visions, apocalyptic visions, I, um, I started to use AI art to kind of depict my dream. So what I would do is write my dreams down, obviously, and then I would put it into chat GPT and ask it to generate images of my dreams. And I love to draw. I love to paint. I love to make art myself. But I can't make things as great as ChatGPT. I, I can't make paintings that great. And I can't crank out like 20 of them in 10 seconds. So I've used ChatGPT to kind of express my dreams in the last video. And I'm going to use it today as well. I don't have a ton of images to show you guys. Just a couple because this dream is pretty simple. It's actually the oldest dream I remember. So it's quite special to me. Now, when I get on camera and I <laughs> share my dreams with you guys, I am making myself quite vulnerable. I realize that. But at the same time, I want to break down and analyze some of my dreams that I'm more comfortable with sharing so that I can show you guys how to analyze dreams. Now, today I'm going to be providing a Jungian analysis of my dreams and a Freudian analysis of my dreams. And I'll do that in the future as well. So I'll do that by asking ChatGPT to pretend it's Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud and to analyze my dreams. I'll take big bits and pieces from that and then I'll obviously I'll reference all of the Freud and Jung that I have on my shelves and I'll go through that and then I'll, I'll take my time and really feel out what these dreams mean and then I'll present them to you guys. So I hope to make one of these videos once every month if I have you know dreams that I think are worthy worth sharing but if I don't and for some reason you guys want me to analyze your dreams you guys can let me know down in the comments so again when you share dreams you make yourself vulnerable now the unconscious is unchanging so we're all kind of tapping into the same thing but the way they manifest themselves to you is unique and it does give us all you know if you share them it does give us all kind of an insight into your psyche so be cautious, but if you do want to share your dreams on this channel, you guys can write them down in the comments. And if you guys want me to make a video out of your dreams, I will do that. I'll take them and I'll analyze them. I'll give you guys kind of my thoughts on, on your dreams and then I'll put that video out there. And then you guys can see a, a bunch of other people comment on your dreams. And then maybe you guys can get a deeper understanding of what actually went on. So if you guys want to do that, let me know down in the comments. Again, make sure you guys make it explicit that you want the dream reviewed in a video. Otherwise, I won't do it because, like I said, you do make yourself vulnerable when you share your dreams. But I want to do that today for you guys. So now let's dive into the dream. So I'll describe the dream to you guys and then I'll provide kind of an analysis from both ends, um, Jung and Freud. So the dream itself is very short. The dream I had probably when I was four, five, six years old, somewhere in that range. I can't pinpoint an exact date, but it was around the time when I started to, I don't know if this is the right term, but gain consciousness. It was around the time when I started to really question things, you know, go introspective and, and just get in my head and think about stuff like I was starting to do that around that age that's when it was starting to happen I was starting to question things so I had this dream where I um I was in this void this cosmic void there was stars and galaxies and nebulas and just all around me it was void and this woman approached me now if you guys have ever seen the animated film Sinbad I believe the the villain in that is Iris I believe that's her name and she appeared to me, that big, you know, purple woman. I'll put a couple images on screen from the from the film so you guys remember who this villain is. She's fantastic. I forget who plays her. It might be Angelina Jolie or something, but fantastic, fantastic performance. And in my dream, this woman comes up to me, and she's huge, like the size of a galaxy, like way bigger than me. And she's kind of talking to me. I have no idea what she said. I Even after the dream, I completely forgot like what she was saying to me. But in the dream, she was talking to me and we were having some sort of dialogue. And I started to get scared because she's so big and her hands were like, you know, skyscrapers to me. Each finger was like a skyscraper. It was quite an insane visual. And I'll put some images on screen now of kind of the chat, GP, chat, chat GPT renditions of my dream. It did a pretty good job, actually. So this is kind of what it looks like. And she she was reaching for me and, and caressing me, and she had this soft tone to her. But if you've ever seen Sinbad, the villain has a soft tone, but there's a lot of malevolence <laughs> behind those eyes. And uh, yeah, it was just getting really creepy. So I started to run away. I turned around and I started to run away from this huge thing 
this huge woman that was in this void and I'm running away. And as I run away, I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller and she's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then towards the end of the dream, I finally realized that I have to turn around and face and confront this woman, <laughs> this huge woman. And as I confronted her, she got smaller and smaller and smaller until the, until the point where she was about the same size as me. And then I, I just stared through her and she became even smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the dream kind of ended there and I woke up. And I won't tell you exactly what happened at, at the end of the dream when I woke up. I'll, I'll save that for the very end of the video. But to give you guys kind of a Jungian analysis of that, obviously this woman, this goddess, Iris, or, or whatever her name is, that's in this void, this represents the unconscious, chaos, right? The, it could represent the anima as well. And I think what was going on there is me, my conscience being, my, my consciousness was confronting just the overwhelming expanse and eternity of the unconscious and the unknown and what's out there in the world. And I think this was my, my mind kind of grappling with, you know, you know, around grade four, grade five, you're starting to get into school, you're starting to get pushed out into the world, you're no longer at home every day, you know, you're starting to get pushed out into the world. So I think this, this was my mind kind of coping with that and telling me that I can't look away from this. I can't be you know, crying on the first day of school like we all do. I can't be doing that. I, I need to go and I need to face it. And in facing it, I'll actually get a hold of it, get a grip of it, and I'll be able to not control it, but I'll be able to deal with it in some sort of way. Whereas when it was huge and I was running away from it, it just kept getting bigger and I kept getting smaller. So I could probably go a lot deeper than that <laughs> in a Jungian sense, but I don't want to make this video too long and I don't want to bore you guys. But I think that's what I was confronting there. I think that was my consciousness confronting the fact of the unknown and the unconscious and just chaos itself. Now, to get more into that anima thing, um, the Freudian analysis is, I think, a little bit more interesting. So I think the woman there represented my mother in a lot of ways. Um, it represented the, the temptation, perhaps, or the Maybe it's temptation. I'm not too sure. It, it represented the potential for an Oedipal relationship. Now, I'm not talking about like a sexual Oedipal relationship. There's different types of consuming mothers. Even Freud knew this, even though he tended to make most things sexual. But that never occurred to me. It was more so this consuming mother, this mother that just always wants to be there for you, right? The, the Oedipal mother. If you watch the the documents, the, the documentary Crumb, I know Jordan Peterson loves that documentary. Um, it's fantastic. I highly recommend it. But if you watch that documentary, you kind of get, you get a feel for what an Oedipal relationship looks like. And that relationship wasn't explicitly sexual. It's not like the mother was, you know, engaging with the child in that way. It was more so that she didn't want him to leave the house and she wanted him to be her man. And there was an allure to that, you know, early in my childhood, not so much for my mother. My mother's fantastic. She never had an Oedipal bone in her body. She never complimented my intelligence. She never complimented my athleticism. She would only compliment me when I did nice things to others. And outside of that, she was always pushing me out there. Go out there. Go play. Go, go. Get out of the house. You know, she kicked me out at like 20 years old. I was the first out of all my cousins to and, and siblings to move out. So she kicked me out. She was always, she fulfilled that, um, that archetype of Mary, I think, you know, the, the famous Pieta um, statue where Mary's kind of offering Jesus up, right? She's holding her broken son in her arms. That, that image is very powerful to me because I think my mother did fulfill that. I think she offered her son up to the world to be broken. So I don't, I'm not trying to say that, you know, there was a temptation from my mother's side to, you know, hold me in and not let me leave the nest. But there was a temptation from my own side, as all children do, to, you know, keep going like, you know, mom, keep holding my hand. Mom, keep holding my hand. Mom, I don't want to go play with friends. I just want to stay home with you. You know, so there's that, there is that temptation. I think every single child, not just, not just little boys, but every single child has that in them, that that point where they get to where they're they they're kind of getting pushed out into the world they have to go meet new friends they have to start being themselves but there's still that allure to just stay connected to the mother and I think that's what was happening in my dream I was realizing that if I stay here with mom for the rest of my life I'm gonna get consumed by her you know even if she's nice even if she, if she has a soft voice I will be consumed by her she'll get too big for me 
and I won't live a life. I'll live a small little pathetic life like like Crumb. Well, not exactly like Crumb, more like Crumb's um, brothers. Yeah. Dark documentary. <laughs> Highly recommended, but very dark. Um, I think that's all I wanted to touch on. Besides, I'll obviously wrap up with how the uh, how the dream ended. So I woke up and I was terrified, obviously. And just like my previous nightmares, I wanted to go to the room of my mom and to tell her about this horrible dream that I just had. But there was something in me that didn't want to do that. And it was because of the dream that I just had. I didn't want to go into my mom's room and tell her about the horrible dream. Instead, I just kind of sat in bed and cried <laughs> alone. And then eventually she came into my room. <laughs> and then I told her, I'm like, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to talk to you about it. I don't want to talk to you about it. I don't, want, I don't want mom. I want dad. So then she sends dad in. And then dad is like, no help. But like, I don't blame him. Like, how are you supposed to handle that crazy dream from a child? But he was like, yeah, whatever. Go to bed. You'll be fine in the morning. I woke up. Didn't think about the dream um, for many, many years. And then, you know, five, six, seven years ago, I started thinking about it again. Because I'm like, wow, that's like the earliest dream I remember. That's really cool. What is that about? And it's taken me since now to kind of put it all together and like I said, I could go into a lot more detail. If you guys want me to make these dream analysis videos longer, I will. I just don't want to bore anybody. So um, that's kind of what I feel like that one was about. And yeah, very short dream, but I feel like I impacted it pretty well there. And uh, I'm going to do that more in the future. I'm going to keep writing my dreams down. The ones that I feel like I can present to you guys in a safe way. I know this one was very personal, but I feel like I've... <laughs> feel like I've out, this is like 10 years ago now or 20 years ago now what am I saying 20 years ago now that I had this dream so I feel like I'm f far past it enough that I can uh, that I can actually share it with you guys so as I collect these dreams that I feel capable of sharing I will make more and more dream analysis videos for you guys and um, like I said if you guys want to share your dreams feel free to do so down in the comments and if you want them in a video please let me know explicitly I don't want to share any dreams without your guys's um, consent and permission. So let me know down in the comments. And yeah, if you guys have any insights to the dream yourself, if you guys want to be armchair psychoanalysis, um, let me know what you guys thought of that dream. <laughs> it's quite a wild one. It's uh, very vivid. It's I could still see it in my memory. So, so yeah, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. It helps boost this channel and the algorithm. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.